probably the strangest metro station in Moscow. It's my working place. Unthinkable, just a few years ago. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Other Way. I'm Luke Jones. We're here in Moscow. Moscow is the biggest city wholly in Europe, and it's known for its traffic jams. So one of the best ways to get around the city quickly is on the metro. So today, we're going to show you around what I consider to be the 10 best metro stations. That'll be for you to judge when you come and check them out for yourselves. But we're going to go through them one by one because these are some real works of art. Now, the Moscow Metro carries two and a half billion people a year. That's about seven million people a day. So it's actually the busiest in Europe. It's the fourth largest in the world. The three largest are in China. It recently overtook the London underground tube metro. We're here outside Novoslobodska station, which is one of my favorite ones, not just because I live nearby. So let's go inside and have a look at what lies in store for us. This will be number one. Not necessarily the best, but the first. Now, apart from being absolutely beautiful, one of the other great things about the Moscow Metro is it's actually extremely reliable. It's the world's most punctual metro station. And another thing, it's incredibly cheap. It costs less than a dollar a ride, and the best way to get around is by using a Troika card. Fill it up, and off we go. We're heading on down into Novoslobodska metro station itself. And one of the features of the metro here in Moscow is the stations are very deep. They're not actually the deepest in the world. First of all, go to St. Petersburg on the metro and they're a lot deeper. And the deepest station of all time is actually in Kiev, Arsenalne. But it takes a little while to get down if you're not walking. So into the depths we go. Now, in the past, one of the difficulties for foreigners traveling on the Moscow Metro was the fact that the signs were in Cyrillic only. Now, as a result of recent events such as the Sochi Winter Olympics in 2014 and the Football World Cup here in the summer of 2018, the signs are now in English to make your life easier. Right, we're on the interchange between the circle line and the grey line. One of the uh, confusing aspects of the Moscow Metro is the fact that sometimes on the circle line and the interchange, the stations have the same name, sometimes they don't. This is one of the examples of the ones that doesn't. Novoslobodska is here on the circle line. If you want to move on to the interchange of the grey line, it's called Mendeleevskia. Now, we're going to go one stop on the circle line to Prospect Mira station, where they're both the same name. Off we go. Now, here we are at Prospect Mira station. This is on the circle line and the interchange with the orange line. Now, Mir actually has two meanings in Russian. It means world and it means peace. So it could be world prospect, it could be peace prospect. I'll let you make up your own mind which one it is. I'll take either. Right, well, we're on the circle line at the moment. Now, legend has it that when the Moscow Metro was being planned, they didn't actually have any idea that they were going to build a circle line. But when Stalin was inspecting the plans, he apparently put a coffee cup down on the instructions and, oops, a brown circle appeared. Now, this could be an urban myth, but it might also explain why the circle line is brown. Well, you never have to wait long for a train on the metro. Literally, they come within about a minute, a minute and a half. So now we're leaving Prospect Mira and we're jumping one stop on the circle line to Komsomolska, which is my favorite. Now, when the Moscow Metro first opened back in 1935, it was actually named after the guy whose original idea it was to get it started, Lazar Kaganovich. That lasted about 20 years, and then it was decided that uh, that wasn't catchy enough, so they changed it to the Lenin Metro. This guy gets everywhere. Okay, now we're changing from one part of the station to the other. Little walk. 
Now, another confusing aspect of the Moscow Metro, just to keep you on your toes, is that many of the stations have changed their names over the years to reflect the difference between the new era and what was in the past, communism. Some of them, however, have kept the original names, like this one here, one of my favorites, Komsomolska. Now, the Komsomol was the acronym for the Young Communist League. Now, you'd sort of think that's a bit in the past, but given the beauty of this station, it was decided to keep it the way it is. So, let's go and have another look. We're on the red line down, heading now to one of the stations where there's actually open air over the Moscow River on a bridge. So uh, it's about eight stops to go, but uh, stay with us. Here we are, probably the strangest metro station in Moscow. It's the only one where the station itself is on a bridge over the Moscow River. It's called Vorobyovoy Gori, which translates as Sparrow's Hill. And it was actually closed between 1983 and 2002. So it's been reopened for almost 20 years. And look at the view. Now, another good reason for coming to Vorobyovoy Gori, Sparrow's Hill Station, is that in addition to the fantastic view across the river, you also get a glimpse at the Luzhniki Stadium, the national stadium of the Russian team, which was built in time for the Moscow Olympics in 1980 and hosted not only the opening, but the finals of the World Cup. And I'm pleased to say I was there for England's semi-final against Croatia, where we uh, came second. <laughs> This is Krapotkinskaya on the red line. Now, this was one of the original 13 stations built back in 1935 along the 11 kilometer stretch. It might not be one of the more beautiful stations. It's quite impressive, but for me, it holds memories because when I came to Moscow as a student back in 1993, September, this was where I lived, just around the corner. So I came here every day. This is Park Kulturi Station, or Park of Culture. And it's one of the few stations where the interchange between the circle line and the red line actually takes place overground rather than underground. And even more importantly, it's actually the station where you get out to go and visit Gorky Park. First time I ever used the Metro back in 1991, that was on my first visit here in February, it cost five kopecks a ride, which I don't know how much that was, but it wasn't much. But it was a pretty grey affair. Now you can even get souvenirs Look at that range. And there's even information if you get lost. My name is Helen. Your name is Helen, Yelena, okay. Yes. Helen. Uh, I am... Um, Do you speak English? Yes, Excellent. Uh, just a little bit. So it's my working place uh, at uh, Moscow Metro. These are our souvenirs. Uh, you can get there pens, pencils, troika cards, uh, many designs. I'm going to have to buy something here just because Elena has been so wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I think what I need, uh, I need definitely one of these Metro badges. Okay. How much do they cost? Uh, they cost uh, 220 rubles. 220? Yes. Okay. I think, I think I can afford that. Such a choice. This is unbelievable, unthinkable just a few years ago. There we go. Pay by card. Thank That's very kind. Card. Thank you very much, Elena. Have a nice day. Take okay. care. This is Kievskaya, which, as the name suggests, is named after the Ukrainian city Kiev. And funnily enough, the trains leave from the station above to Kiev. You can see on the wall there's a plaque commemorating the eternal friendship between the Russian and Ukrainian nations. And the station name Vokzal, in Russian, station, actually comes from the English word Vauxhall. Bet you didn't know that. Right, one of the beauties of this line, the light blue one, or the Filiovsky line, is the fact that it actually goes over ground for parts of the journey, it goes over a bridge, and just as we reach Kievsky railway station, you will see the White House. Now, can you believe it? Not only Washington DC has a White House, Moscow's got one too. It's coming into focus now. There it is, what a beautiful view over the river. This is our Batskaya station, one of the longest stations on the Moscow Metro. Now, many people are not actually aware of why it's called Metro. Well, the Moscow Metro is actually called the Moscow Metropolitan, 
which comes from the first ever line in London, the oldest one, the Metropolitan Line. So there you have it. This station is called Plosche de Revoluzzi, or Revolution Square. Now this is one of the quirkier stations on the Moscow Metro. As you'll see, there's quite a lot of statues here. Now this particular one with the dog, you'll notice, has had its nose rubbed on numerous occasions, so it's turned gold. It's rumoured to be good luck if you give it a rub, so uh, join in the fun. As well as having some amazing statues, this station, Plosh de Revoluzzi, is right under the Kremlin. Now, it's well known that Stalin had two bunkers built deep underground in case of evacuation, but it's also rumoured that there was a second metro built called Metro 2 to evacuate important people out of the Kremlin to these bunkers. Now, no one's ever managed to verify the proof of the existence of Metro 2, so we'll leave it up to your imagination, but there's a good chance that it exists somewhere deep down. This is Mayakovskaya on the dark green line. Now, some of these are some of the older trains on the Moscow Metro, so they're pretty noisy. Now, you might be wondering what facilities are there for the disabled here. Well, actually, this has been thought about and used for a while. Now, most interestingly, the announcements are made using a male voice if you're heading into town and a female voice if you're coming out of town. Ah, you may think, what about the circle line? If it's clockwise, it's a male voice. If it's anti-clockwise, it's a female voice. Right, so we're now at Belaruska Station, which funnily enough is the terminus for Belaruska Station, which is for the trains to, you guessed it, Belarus. This brings us to the end of another exciting episode of Luke Jones The Other Way. Hope you've enjoyed it. Next time you visit Moscow, you'll use the underground or even the metro. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Not necessarily in that order. This is